Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to be overclocking a Raspberry Pi 4 in order to get a little bit more performance out of our favourite single board computer. Now, before we begin, I just need to caution that overclocking can damage your Pi, it could destroy a Raspberry Pi, so please only try what I'm going to show you in this video at your own risk. But with that warning out of the way, Let's go and get started. Right, here we have the Raspberry Pi 4 we're going to overclock, which is an 8GB model running Raspberry Pi OS from an SSD, and it's fitted with an ice tower heatsink and fan, as we need decent cooling for overclocking. I put all of this together in my recent Ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 rig video, and it's good to be now stressing it out. So, let's transition to the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Here we are, and uh, before we get down to the overclock, I thought there was a few things we should set up. Firstly, I thought it might be useful to add a few more applets to the panel. So I'm going to go up here and press uh, Add Remove Panel Items there, and uh, if we do an Add over here, there are various things that could be very useful if we're doing overclocking. Specifically, I'm going to add CPU frequency front end, or add that in like that. And then we'll also go back in and add in down there a CPU temperature monitor. And also we'll add in, you can probably now guess, CPU usage monitor like that. And these have all now appeared along here. And I'm just going to move them along, just going to uh, there and uh, up. It'll go along the top like that. There it is over there. And we'll also take the uh, temperature monitor and move that along as well. And also the uh, CPU usage monitor. There we are. That's how I like to have things on my panel. I normally have those there, and many people ask me in my videos, how do you get them up there on the Raspberry Pi? So basically, this shows us the uh, CPU's uh, utilization. It's not doing very much at the moment. Tiny little graph down there. This is showing us its temperature. And if we hover over this one, we can see the frequency of the Raspberry Pi 4's uh, processor, which, uh, as you can see there, is altering a bit. And it's worth pointing out that the Raspberry Pi 4, like all modern computers, runs at lots of different speeds. And its default speed, its idle speed, as we can see here, is 600 megahertz. And the Pi will increase its frequency as it needs to, as it needs to do more demanding things. Oh look, there it just nipped up to 1.5 gigahertz, which is the standard maximum speed for a Raspberry Pi 4. But we're, of course, going to be increasing that. And we need to keep an eye on the temperature when we're overclocking because if a Raspberry Pi gets to more than about 80 degrees, it will throttle, it'll reduce its speed, and therefore we won't get the benefits of the overclock. And so overclocking is always about trying to get the maximum possible frequency for your CPU whilst keeping the temperature for the Pi at least under 80 degrees C. And you might therefore be thinking, what you told us earlier, Chris, about the fact you could damage your Pi by overclocking, that's got to be wrong, because if a Pi gets a too hot, it'll simply throttle itself back, reduce its speed, it won't get damaged. And that's, that's great in theory and normally is true. However, you might remember back in my first ever Raspberry Pi 4 cooling video, we had a Raspberry Pi 4 running at a good 90 degrees centigrade for a long period of time. It can happen. The mechanisms for throttling don't necessarily always save a processor. So if you are going to be overclocking a Raspberry Pi or anything else, be aware there is always a slight risk of damage to the silicon. So do everything at your own risk. Anyway, having a, talked about these little things up here, let's look at a couple of other things. Firstly, we want to be able to test out our overclock. And so what I've got here is a Caden Live with a very small edit in, an edit showing some boats and some uh, be beach and sea and things like that. That's a nice peaceful thing to look at, isn't it? And uh, I've set this up with, uh, in the renderer, a script so we can render this out and see how long it takes to uh, render. So I'm going to start that script and it'll take a while. So we'll fast forward until the render has completed. And uh, there we are, we can see that on a, a Raspberry Pi at its standard speed, it's uh, rendered out in what, three minutes and 45 seconds. So we've got a benchmark we can compare to what happens when we've overclocked the Pi in the next segment of the video. Finally, by means of uh, setting things up, I've written this little bash script. Uh, and I've written this in Gini, which you can find over in the programming, and uh, there we are, the Gini programmers editor, and I've created this script so we can check the frequency the Raspberry Pi CPU is running at, and measure its temperature, and uh, stress it out to give it a bit of a test. 
So what does this do? Well, it sets things up to be a bash script, it clears the screen to be tidy. It then down here shows the uh, CPU frequency, which just is reported by that command there, and the temperature of it, which is reported by this command here. And then it runs sysbench to force the CPU to go up to its full turbo speed, initially 1.5 gigahertz. So what this is doing is uh, factoring prime numbers up to a value of 1,000. That won't take very long, but it'll force the Pi to go up to its uh, maximum uh, turbo speed. And on the end of this, there's a bit of code that just suppresses the output to stop us having too much stuff coming up on the screen. And it is worth pointing out before you can run this script, you must have installed sysbench on your Raspberry Pi by going to a terminal and typing a sudo apt install sysbench. Anyway, assuming you've done that, down here after we've run sysbench, we're going to report the frequency of the Pi again. And then we're going to do a longer sysbench test where I'm going to leave all the output coming up on the screen. We might want to look at it. It's going to factor prime numbers here up to 50,000. That'll take a couple of minutes. So this will give a chance to see if the Pi is stable at the overclock we've used. If it can get through that test, it's probably stable. And then finally, we report some numbers again. Either save this script in a folder called a scripts. If we do a list there, you'll see there's a folder there called scripts. CD scripts will take us to it and list and there is the script. And to make the script executable, I've already entered the command sudo chmod plus x and the name of the file, which here is overclock test sh. If you don't do that, you won't have the, an executable file to run. Anyway, having said all of that, what a lot of setup in this video. We're going to uh, find the command to actually run it. There we are, and uh, we'll just run it through like this. It'll clear the screen, report the pies initially starting at 600 megahertz. It's then uh, run the suspense test and got it to 1.5 gigahertz, and it's now running the longer part of the test to give us a, a bit of a stress out to the Pi. And you can see up here, we're now stressing out the Pi to 100% processor utilization up there in the CPU usage monitor. Temperature's going up a little bit, still not too bad with the ice tower, and we can see over here as well the frequency is at a 1500 megahertz. We're all set up to do some exciting overclocking. So let's just let this test complete to give us another reference point. And uh, there we are, it's finished. And uh, the pie, as we can see, was fully stressed out up here. It's not got too hot, so that's the benefits of using a nice tower. And it took 237.4 seconds to run this test before we've overclocked the pie. Greetings, here I am back again in Raspberry Pi OS, and it's now time to uh, implement our overclock. Yes, good things come to those who wait. Patience is a virtue and all that kind of stuff. Now, to actually implement an overclock, we need to edit the Raspberry Pi's config.txt file, which it executes when it boots up. And there's various ways you could edit this file. I'm going to use Gini, the editor we were looking at in the last section where I wrote my bash script. There it is. But if I run Gini from the menu, it won't run in root mode. It won't be able to alter the config.txt file. So what I'm going to do is to go to a terminal and type a sudo Gini like that to run Gini in root mode so we can actually alter the config.txt file. And if we just go to file and uh, open, uh, you'll see it's actually found it already because I've been here already earlier today. But if you didn't find it there, you just go to file system and go to boot and you'll find uh, down there config.txt and uh, you can open it up. And if we go down here, you'll see there's a little overclocking section already there somewhere. There we are on comment to overclock the arm, the, the processor. And there's lots of different commands we could put in here. And if you want to know what they all are, go to this fantastic page on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website called uh, overclocking options in config.txt and you'll see lots, lots of information is there if you want to get deeply into overclocking on a, a Raspberry Pi. Anyway, here what we're going to do is fairly straightforward. We're going to increase the maximum turbo speed of a Raspberry Pi 4 initially to 1.7 gigahertz. So I'm going to take this line here, arm frequency equals 800, and put it to 1700. And we'll have to uncomment this line to it to actually execute it. But uh, to make that work, we'll also have to give the Pi a little bit more oomph, a little bit more voltage to the, the CPU. To do that, we put a command in here, which is going to be over voltage and it's going to equal two and uh, what over voltage does is for every step of one you give it it increases the voltage of the processor by 0.025 volts so uh, over voltage equals two as we've got uh, here is actually increasing the cpu voltage by 0.05 volts 
And if you're wondering, over voltage works in the range minus 16 to 8. It works from under voltage to over voltage. But I would strongly recommend keeping your values in the range 1 to 6. Anyway, this should work uh, for now. So we'll just do file and a save like that and a close down a Gini. And then we'll do a sudo reboot and see what happens when we reboot our Pi. And uh, here we are coming up again. I will speed through, of course, till we've uh, fully rebooted. And uh, there we are. We have a successful reboot. We haven't uh, messed things up so far, which is always uh, good to see. And uh, we now need to use the script we did earlier to uh, check out uh, what is going on. So let's just do a, a CD scripts to get where we were and just remind ourselves what it was. There we are. It must be sitting in the buffer somewhere. There we are, and if we now execute our overclock test, there we are, you'll see, yes, the Pi started off at a 680 megahertz, but has gone up to a 1.7 gigahertz, which is what we wanted. And it's now running through the longest sysbench test, hopefully in a stable fashion, seems to be stable so far. So we'll let this test complete and see what kind of result we get. And uh, there we are, it is completed. These things seem to be stable still. The uh, Pi is running at a uh, uh, high, oh, it's dropped down to 680 megahertz already. Look, it doesn't hang around at the higher speeds, does it? Process utilization there was clearly very high. Temperature's absolutely fine. And it executed the test in what, 209.35 seconds. So a significant improvement in performance from the 237.4 seconds it took on our 1.5 gigahertz Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, let's also do the Caden Live test. This will be very interesting, I think. A real world test of uh, an overclocked Pi. And we'll just bring in our uh, test file like that. And go to a render. And our script is sitting there already. So let's uh, run the script. And uh, here we are, we're heading towards completion. A few seconds left. I just wanted to point out that whilst the Pi is going at its uh, maximum speed here, 1700 megahertz, our fantastic overclock, we're not getting full processor utilization doing a render out in a Caden Live. Not like we get the full processor utilization running the Sysbench test. This is after all a real world test, but uh, let's see, is it gonna finish? There we are, yes, the Pi is uh, dropped down its speed again, and it's rendered out in what, uh, three minutes and uh, 24 seconds. So we have had some improvement here. It was 345 before, but it's not quite as big an improvement as you might expect with a level of overclock. But uh, still, we will soldier on and overclock things some more. Right, here I am back again to push the overclock even further. We're back in again, as you can see. And uh, here I put over voltage to six, which is the maximum value I would recommend going to. And I put the frequency to 2000 megahertz to two gigahertz, that psychological barrier. And I'd point out you can also overclock the GPU and the Pi. The default frequency is 500 megahertz. I've got a line here which will put it to 750 megahertz. But in fact, I'm not going to use that because in my experience, you don't get a massive amount of benefit from overclocking with GPU. And indeed, the Raspberry Pi Foundation says the benefit is minimal. It can give you potentially, I think, issues with stability trying to do a GPU as well. So I don't know, some people will disagree with that in the comments, but I'm going to stick just to overclocking the CPU here and we'll see if we can get the Pi to run at 2 gigahertz. So uh, let's uh, again do a save on that and we'll do a sudo reboot like that. Could I have taken that for somewhere else? I could have done. I just like typing things. It keeps me happy. Do you think we're going to see an exciting Raspberry Pi screen in a second? A lovely little spectrum. Yes, there it is. And from there, I will fast forward on till we've finished rebooting. And uh, here we are back again. The Pi is uh, still working. It's worth pointing out, of course, it might not work if you're trying different overclocking settings. You might get to a point where you just get a, a black screen. Nothing happens. The Pi won't boot. If that is the case, you can try holding down the shift key during your next boot, which will disable your overclocking and you can change the values back in config.txt. Or if that doesn't work, you might have to take your Raspberry Pi boot drive and plug it into another computer and edit the config.txt file there. Or in fact, it might be the whole thing's corrupted and you've got to start again. Or maybe your entire Pi is blown up, not very likely, slightly possible, in which case you need to go and sit in a corner and contemplate the meaning of life. 
Anyway, hopefully when you overclock, you'll get things running again as we've got here. So let's once again execute our script. Bits like that. Why don't I use CD scripts from the thing? I don't know. Anyway, let's run it there. And um, yes, we've got our two uh, gigahertz there and it's showing up here as a two uh, gigahertz. That's fantastic. So uh, let's see if this test will stably complete. And uh, there we are. We do seem to be stable and working okay. We're down to a 177.9 seconds, a significant improvement from what we saw previously. So let's straight in and we'll also repeat our uh, Caden Live test. And here we are waiting to go. Let's start the script. There we are, it's going. High is again up to uh, its uh, two gigahertz speed. Let's see how long this one takes to complete. And uh, there we are, we've broken the three minute barrier now, two minutes, 57 seconds to uh, render this out on our two gigahertz overclocked Raspberry Pi 4. And in fact, let's throw all the results so far onto a table so we can see exactly what is going on. We've got some significant performance improvement here now. In theory, of course, these results will be proving it in a directly proportional way. I've not worked it out. Maybe someone will work it out and let us know in the comments and we'll all thank you greatly for your, your kind calculations. Anyway, as impressive as this is, I wouldn't mind seeing if we can't just push things a little bit further. So, here I am back again, overclocking on the Silicon Frontier, and there's a gale raging outside which makes it feel even more exciting. Anyway, as you can see, I've now set the frequency to 2.1 gigahertz, and in fact this value gives us some very interesting results. At least it did last time I tried it, so let's uh, save this and uh, see what happens. Do our uh, sudo and reboot, bring the Pi back up again. And uh, here we are back on the uh, Raspberry Pi OS desktop, so we'll uh, repeat our trick over previously. Let's change the right uh, directory and run the uh, script. And uh, as you can see, the interesting thing is here, I set 2.1 gigahertz. We're actually running according to this measure anyway at 2.29 gigahertz. And in fact, if we go up here, that also tells us we're running at 2.294 gigahertz, 2294 megahertz, which is a Rather fast, isn't it? I'm not quite sure I believe this, but it does seem to be stable. And uh, I found if I push the value beyond 2100, things change energy again. I don't get this speed. I find setting 2100 gives me the maximum speed I can obtain on this particular Raspberry Pi with the ice tower keeping it nice and cool. It's an extraordinary speed of a 2294 megahertz. So let's let the test complete and see what results it gives us. And uh, there we are, the test completed in 184.7 seconds. And uh, that clearly is a little bit strange because if we uh, put it onto our table, you see we got uh, 177.9 seconds on the uh, previous setting of two gigahertz. It suggests something's gone a little bit wry here. But uh, let's just finally run the uh, Caden Live test. This will at least be giving us something to talk about in the comments. Here we are, so let's uh, start the script. And uh, there we are, it has finished in uh, 2 minutes 49 seconds, which again, if we put it onto the table, that clearly suggests we are running faster than we were with the previous settings, 2 minutes 49 seconds rather than 2.57. But I think personally, my takeaway here is that 2 gigahertz is a sensible limit for overclocking this Raspberry Pi 4. So there we are, we've managed to make a Raspberry Pi 4 run a little bit faster. As I said at the start of this video, please be aware that overclocking can damage a Raspberry Pi, it can destroy a Raspberry Pi, so please only try anything I've shown you here at your own risk. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.